I see lots of comments comparing this Batman to The Dark Knight. I don't think that's fair, as both of these movies are very different. I wanted to know your thoughts and how Batman compares to The Dark Knight in your opinion. Uh, your opinion. In your opinion. Thanks for taking the time to answer my question. You're welcome, Bridget. Uh, Dark Knight and Batman, Andrew, this is going to be a debate that's going to go on for years and years to come. And I think right now we're too early in the Batman. How many times have you seen the Batman? Just once. Just the once you didn't? Okay. Rob is on his third showing as we speak. Yikes. I, I know. That's that's nine hours of your life, uh, which is great. It's a great movie. But this is going to be the, the debate of debates for a long time for uh, Batman fans. And I think I tweeted out the other day that I don't think we should be comparing them. They're we can love them both. I don't know why we have to be like one's better than the other, but that's going to, it's inevitable. Exactly. That's going to happen. Bridget's going to happen uh, for me out of the theater right away. I got to give the nod to this one, the Batman. Um, and and I want to really think about why Andrew, and I want to explain why. And because the dark Knight is a fantastic movie. Should it wasn't nominated for best picture. And then the next year they bumped up the best picture nominees to 10 because the dark Knight got denied this year. Oddly enough, because Spider-Man got rejected, even though I don't think Spider-Man no way home should have been nominated for really anything Well, not anything, but like the best picture. Now they're having the fan favorite just so that Spider-Man can, can win it. And it's clearly the front runner runner because whatever. So they, they, you know, whatever everyone loves Spider-Man. I'm not saying that, but it wasn't, it was not a best picture movie for there, sure. There should be an movie. Oscar category for holy shit. I can't believe they actually pulled this off. Award. Yeah. That, and that's, that's what Spider-Man where, should win. Yeah. That's what it should. Cause it wasn't a best picture. It was a lot of fun. It's a great movie, but it's not a best picture film by, by any mm -hmm. But the dark Knight, I think was, I think the dark Knight was, and I think this Batman is as well, but this Batman gets the edge for me. Um, very slight. It's a very slight edge. And this is probably, I've only seen it the one time also. So time is going to tell. And I might backtrack this in four months, like you said, and come out and I completely hate this movie on every level. And I do think this movie is 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 going to get overhyped and it's gonna get um it's gonna get over scrutinized as well because of of how well it, how good it is, right? Because it's it, it's really good, but it's really good here. It's not really good here, and that's there's gonna be a dividing line for people who like this movie, right? It's not fun like Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, but the reason why for me, Andrew, this is going to get the Batman will get the the upper hand in comparing it to the Dark Knight is both movies are way more similar than I think I realized when I went into it. This movie is very similar to the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight takes a, a left turn and this one takes a right turn. And they both have they're both movies about Batman's effect on Gotham. And one effect on Gotham is people want to be Batman and heroic, but they were hockey pads. And in this one, it's creating, it's, it's, it's not, this one is having an, a, a different effect, not the effect that Batman wants. It's turning Gotham against itself because he is vengeance. He is scary. So it, it's making people feel free to bring that out, which is, I won't say what it is, but it's very similar to uh, recent current events. And, and I, this was not even going through my head when I watched it, but I'm like, this is what happens. So you give people an out and they will take it. They're going to use it. You give them a path, they'll go down that path. And the Dark Knight kind of uses it in one direction and, and the Batman takes it in the other direction. And by the end of the Dark Knight, he has to be, you know, the the victim, basically, the one to take all the fault and the blame of, of Two-Face because you can't let Harvey Dent, Harvey Dent's the White Knight. Whereas in this one, it ends up with him realizing that vengeance isn't what Batman is about. Hope is what Batman is about. And, and yeah, and I just thought that that was, I was like, that is perfect. And maybe how they got there, you know, some people are arguing, whatever. But I think it, that extra Joker scene, which I called, if that would have been in there, that might have even helped it a little bit more. Or more it might have been too much because we do get it later on. That's why Matt Reeves said they cut that scene. So... I look they're great movies the batman does something that the dark knight and the Trill dark knight trilogy kind of did and that was create the rogue gallery of villains i think this movie did it better than the dark knight in that aspect i think the dark knight had scarecrow which i love i love that he showed up and he did his little thing but then you have the Joker and everything around it. This one, you utilize the Penguin, you utilize Falcone, you utilize Catwoman, you utilize 
that onion face drug dealer guy who robbed the grocery store, who is now my favorite. <laughs> That's my favorite costume. Yeah. You, you had you had uh, you had two faces goons running the nightclub, the twins running the nightclub, the and it's just it utilized all of that, but it it didn't connect them. Like in the Dark Knight Rises, they connect Scarecrow, and I love that scene. Don't get me wrong, but they connect. But this one was like the, there's a plot, and they utilized the characters in Batman for the plot. They didn't have to make up new characters to fit into their narrative. They use the ones that we know to fit into the narrative. And I think that is where I give the Batman the edge. Again, they're both probably nine and a half out of 10 for me. Um, Like, you know, so I don't think it's worth arguing, but I did. That's my uh, current state of thinking as it goes on again, 14 years from now, when I've had 14 years to think about to watch this movie and think about this movie but i will say as much as i like the dark knight i watched batman 89 and batman and robin more it's i don't know why um <laughs> only I, look, I, only, I know batman forever is my uh, mask of the phantasm is the best but i, I, I actually I, I guess i watch all the batman movies quite a bit but the I, the dark knight and the batman are very similar and the other thing um which is so completely personal to me is i love the voiceover film noir i just i loved i preferred that take person that's just a personal uh, opinion i i preferred that take to it than the heat of dark knight and that's just a personal thing. and again they're both 9.5 you know what the, the batman is 9.6 ba- dark knight is 9.5 just so that i have to pick one over the other but andrew <laughs> why don't why don't you uh give your opinion you can't talk about rises this is just dark knight and the batman i know you're a big rises guy so your turn go for it yeah this is a good question bridget and uh it is something that i think people are gonna be you know you won't be able to escape this question for like the next year uh probably even until the batman 2 comes out but yeah i'm in the minority i actually prefer rises to the dark knight um i don't think the dark knight is bad i just like rises even more but i think right now where my heart is taking me and it's completely close like these are the margin between them you can't stick a mail file through it would be dark knight dark knight rises the batman um and that's just that's recency bias for sure that's riddler bias for sure but it's just coming from a place where i feel like the batman has the best of both worlds in what i like to see uh in terms of a batman story because the dark knight trilogy as awesome as it is it really is like you said james it's heat with batman characters in it you know, it's it's a, a Chicago mafia movie that just has, you know, Bane pops up every once in a while. This movie, this new one, it feels, Gotham feels the way I've always wanted it to feel, which is it's this heightened world that's otherworldly. And it's not quite Earth. I can't walk out my door and go to Gotham. The Gotham and the Nolan movies, I feel like I could, you know, drive somewhere and I could be in that Gotham City. This one, I can't feel that. And it takes me back to that feeling of seeing Tim Burton's Gotham and Schumacher's Gotham and how much that blew me away. And the the Gotham from the, the Arkham games too and how it's just like, there is no real city that looks like this. And I love that because everything is just slightly bigger than life and bigger than it normally would be. And roads go on a little longer and bridges arch a little more and statues are a little bit taller. And this had that on top of the whole gritty realism thing so it melded the two worlds into something that i think is just the perfect chocolate peanut butter batman recipe and i was i'm actually not a fan of the um the the voiceover detective stuff but i was in this one and i i'm usually not a fan because most of the time especially when it comes to comic book stuff it's that Frank Miller narration. And I don't care for Frank Miller. I think he's always trying too hard to be badass. Uh, it's like he's a 14-year-old boy stuck in an old man's body. And he's like, what's the most badass thing I can say in this voiceover voice? And as soon as this movie started and Batman was doing the voiceover, I was like, oh, no, what am I in for? But the voiceover here ended up being great. It didn't bother me at all. It felt classy. Uh, Frank Miller never feels classy to me. So 
it took that class, it added all the things that I love, it mixed Batman with realism and with fantasy in all the right ways. So I think with that mixture, if we're excluding Riddler, because I'm always going to prefer Riddler, that is what elevates this to me above the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises, is it's just it's got all those things firing on all those cylinders. I love it. I yeah and to your point on that gotham was a huge character in this it was a character the Bat- batman begins it felt like it was going to be a character and then by the time we got to dark knight it's like not chicago and this one had a lot of chicago in it but it wasn't chicago it was like you never quite knew where you were but you always knew you were in gotham city the other thing with this one i touched this on our spoiler review a little bit was it really felt like it was connected to the adam west batman now, not in tone or style, but you had a phone, like the freaking bat phone. It wasn't red, sure, but it was like an old-fashioned dial, like phone. Yes. It had, it didn't have Aunt Harriet in it, but it had Dory, like the, and there were like little things that I'm like, this feels like this Batman that I knew, like it was taking me back, but it was also on 40. Like it was, so it was kind of <laughs> like, like it was like, here's what you liked when you were a kid. Here's the adult version of what you liked as a kid. That's kind of what it was taking me as too with this one. And I really appreciated all those little touches to it. And I, and I said this again, it's like, they're both grounded in this reality, but I feel like this one's a little bit more of a fantastical reality. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm, I'm really curious where they take things. I don't think it's going to ever go over the top. And I don't think we're ever going to see a Superman. And again, like I said, off the top of the show, the Batman universe is as deep as the DC and Marvel universe is at, on its own. It doesn't need to have Superman. It, it, like, just let these characters be and breathe and bring them all in. And I, I really appreciate that. That being said, if they ever made the Bat Flag movie and he fought off and like that stuff happened, I'm all in on that too. Like, just don't get me wrong. But oh. in this world, like Batman is just like enough for me and the Batman villains are enough. And I think when you have the two faced goons, whether that's a, you know, that might be just a little Easter egg, the twins, that might be your Easter egg. But it also opens a door to, well, Gil Colson was a DA. He's gone. They need a new DA. Who are they going to bring in? You're going to bring in this, you know, and cast Billy D. That would be amazing. But, you know, like they, they, like you have these little breadcrumbs spread out. There's opportunity. Obviously, the unseen Arkham Prisoner. Also, the, the, the thing that that scene does, and the deleted scene might have done even more, is this is year two. So this is already the dark night of this franchise, basically. But this is year two now. And the brilliant thing of that is there's a whole year one where he captured criminals and put them in Arkham and put them every, all these other places. And I think that's, that's genius to me that these characters exist already. And now that you have the Joker, Matt Reeves said, we might not even get the Joker again. That might be the only time we see him, but he wanted him to be there because he wanted you to know. And this is the brilliance of that scene is because the Joker's there. That means anybody else could be there. Mm -hmm. Any other Batman villain could be there or could be out there. Nobody needs to turn into anybody. They could already be established and show up. And I love that aspect of this. And uh, again, though, I love the I love the Dark Knight. I just watched it a week ago, and I was just like, "Damn, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful movie." Uh, and th- this movie, though, the final thought for me, Andrew, on this one, then I'll let you take it. This movie for me is very similar to the Joker in that they just kind of made a movie, and uh, they wanted to make this movie, and here's the movie they make, and they based it off of the, the old '70s and '80s stuff, and they did what they wanted, and here you go, take it or leave it. That's that was honestly that was my biggest takeaway. Was I'm like, this is more like the Joker than like the Dark Knight, even though those two will always get compared. Yeah, I want to, um, I, I can't remember what Todd Phillips, like if he had a reason specifically for setting the Joker in an 80s Gotham. Um, I, I, I don't know if that was a nod to a specific comic or what his reasoning was behind making it a period piece without really being a period piece. I think um, it was just to make it the the uh, king of comedy, the De Niro movie. I think that's yeah. all he wanted to do. He just literally just wanted to make that movie. He's just like, yeah, let me just uh, slap a no, uh, clown coat of paint on king of comedy. That, that, yeah, I'm really curious why that got, but I get, that's that's a question for another day. But yeah, this Gotham, the Batman's Gotham, is right where I want it to be, and I want them to go even further with it. Like I feel like, um, is it? Is it Max Shrek's company where his logo is just that big smiling head? Is that what? Yeah, I feel like yeah. that head would not feel out of place in this Gotham. 
No, no that's what I love. And you've played the Arkham games. Like, you know, you stand on a rooftop, you see a sea of roofs and water towers and radio towers and like way more neon than any real world city would have in mm -hmm. all the colors of the rainbow. I'm like, that's Gotham for me. So get that going, get us more of that. And I'm, I'm never leaving the theater. I'll just keep watching them on repeat. And, you know, I hate long movies. I'm not into long movies, but this one I was, I sent a text to, to my wife when I ended in the theater. And I said, we're going to stick around for the next showing. And I totally <laughs> would have too. I, like, I was like, I love that movie. Um, it was really good. <laughs>